one of the things that psychologists can tell young women is that the shorter term mating strategy game you play, the more likely you are to end up in the hands of a psychopathic partner. Absolutely. That is, if you're, if you're going for short term mating, the other people involved are going to be less agreeable, less interested in deep emotional connection, and they're going to be more interested in their own power and pleasure from sexual conquest, which means you're going to get more narcissists and psychopaths. That's just, it's just like the math of the situation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm well, not a prude in, in any speak. way. I mean, this is literally just yeah. the math of when you set things up this way, this is what you're going to get. It's like saying, Hey, I meet guys at bars. I'm like, well, the people you meet at a bar are going to be different than you meet at the, at the charity picnic, just a different selection of people. Yeah. Well, it's tricky for women too, because, you know, they also have this additional problem, which is that. <laughs> The dependent, hyper-obedient losers are all also going to be the nice guys who are hanging around the nice situations. And that's not all, that's also not a good deal for them, right? But, but it is the, the psychopathic end of it is quite frightening because, well, you know, the literature when, when, when personality psychologists started to investigate subclinical psychopathy and develop the dark triad formulation, right? So that was narcissistic. So wanting unearned social status, Machiavellian, manipulative, and psychopathic, which is predatory and parasitical. That's a pretty bad combination, yes. right? And they were the ones, but it wasn't bad enough. This is the thing that's so terrifying because further investigation showed that that formulation wasn't complete till you added sadism, which was positive delight in the unnecessary suffering of others. Yes. And so what women have to understand is that, you know, you're not only turning yourself over to the, uh, you know, excitement-seeking, narcissistic, self-centered guys. I mean, that might be bad enough, but if you're also turning yourself over to the sadists, which seems to be the case, because those four things are pretty tightly associated, then you're really looking for a spot of positive misery. And so if that isn't what you're pursuing, you know, you might want to temper your thrill seeking with the idea that hanging about the psychopathic predatory parasites is probably not the world's best idea. Uh, yeah, and the, and the sadism is scary. I mean, you've uh, the old research where they'd see if people would, you know, grind bugs in a coffee grinder or something. It was like grinding pill bugs. I mean, this the sadism is, you know, really dark. It's taking pleasure in people's suffering. Um, I think the challenge for women is they are attracted to guys who have confidence and ambition and seem like they have a direction. And you run into guys that are like, I'm a nice guy. And I go, I don't know if you're nice so much as you're kind of a loser. And you know, and so the problem is if you're selecting for guys who are ambitious, half those ambitious guys are going to be pretty nice guys and half of them are going to be kind of self-centered and maybe more problematic and it's hard to know the difference. So it's very hard for women out there. Well, this is also why the, the, well, the evidence also suggests that it's the younger and less experienced women who are more likely to fall for the machinations of the psychopathic predators because they can't distinguish between competence, confidence, and false confidence. Yeah, because you're young. And the other thing with narcissism, and you see this a lot, is when you first meet people, when you first start dating, the way our culture works is we go from sort of fun relationships that are exciting to deep and emotional relationships. And so at that fun stage, the people who are narcissistic are just more attractive. Like if I meet somebody who's really narcissistic, I'm like, God, this person's fun. We'll go out drinking. It'll be great. And then later on, I'm like, we want to really have a high trust relationship. It's the wrong person. So our whole system is designed to put people with people that are more narcissistic and not people who are going to be good in the long term. Just where our system works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's another complexity there that you pointed to as well, which is that, um, man, we could make this rule of thumb. It's like, um, all, almost all losers will attempt to pass themselves off as nice guys. But that, and I mean the infantile dependent types. I'm not infantile and dependent, I'm nice. Well, so some nice guys are competent, but all infantile losers, except those who've fallen completely off the edge of the world and are resentful beyond belief, they're gonna pass themselves off as nice guys. Now, if you're hanging around with the predatory psychopaths, even in the 
initial short-term stages of a relationship, you're not going to have to contend with the false nice guy problem, right? And that's a major problem because what woman in her right mind wants a dependent man? That's like, you might as well just have a child, right? At least the child has an excuse. Yeah. And so by being attracted to the more dominating types, you solve the nice guy problem. But exactly. you throw your, the next problem is that you throw your hand. You, yeah, okay. okay. That, so that is very well put. That you, you solve the dependent problem, but you get the psychopath problem. So you solve one problem, but you end up with another problem. And and I think this is so important because I, I get tired of guys saying, you know, I'm a nice guy. I'm like, really? You out doing charity work every week? Do you do you run a you down at the you down at the church every week putting together the kids' camp? Because I bet if you were doing that, women would find you attractive. I bet you're just kind of weak. Well, that that's a really good that's a really good point, and that's actually something practical that the women, well, and the men for that matter, who are listening to this might understand too. So so let's let's say that you know you do you're a woman and you do happen across a nice guy. And now you're wondering, well, is he nice or is he just weak, right? In that in that way that Nietzsche criticized, right? When he said that most morality is cowardice. And he didn't mean that morality was cowardice. He meant that cowards use morality as a disguise. Okay, so now you're trying to sort that out if you're a woman. So I think you do exactly what you just did, which is to say, okay, you're a paragon of moral virtue. Where's the proof? Right, the work <laughs> proof, and that would be the sacrificial proof. Like, what are you doing yeah. that's extremely difficult that indicates your commitment to these high moral standards? And that can't yeah. just be ideological hand waving, which is the easiest thing to get away with. It has to be real, real indication of commitment. Yes, I like that. And the sacrifice part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have doing to pay that, a price for it. You have to pay a price. I had a buddy who donated a kidney and I thought, my goodness, you should put that on your dating app, you know, because that's sort of a an honest signal of being a good person. Um, but but there's a lot of false signals of being a good person as well. Research shows that women who engage in short term relationships are more likely to attract narcissistic or psychopathic partners. A study published in Personality and Individual Differences in 2009 found that individuals with dark triad traits, narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy prefer short-term flings as they offer opportunities for manipulation without emotional commitment. These personalities thrive on power and control, prioritizing their own pleasure over genuine connection. Nietzsche's philosophy on morality is relevant here. He argued that much of what passes as moral behavior is often just weakness masquerading as virtue, which ties into nice guy phenomenon that Peterson and Campbell discuss. Many men who claim to be nice might not be virtuous, but instead lack strength and independence. While they aren't as dangerous as narcissists, they still contribute to unfulfilling codependent relationships. Jordan Peterson and Keith Campbell highlight a central challenge for women is distinguishing between genuine competence and false confidence. Dominant, confident men may seem appealing, solving the nice guy problem, but this can lead to encounters with narcissists. Peterson warns that women, especially younger ones, often misjudge these traits. Campbell points out that early stage dating culture favors narcissistic personalities, making it harder for women to identify long term trustworthy partners. Both stress that women should evaluate men's actions, not just their words, to ensure they're selecting truly virtuous partners. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all of this. Thanks for watching.